Now, uh, Mr. John J. Glancy, the dignitary of Prideless Function today, is from Ireland, a experienced senior lecturer in culinary arts and international gastronomy. He is skilled in research, operation management, strategic planning, leadership skills, curriculum development, and CPD programs. Strong arts and design professional with a master focused in MSc culinary innovation and food product development from Dublin Institute of Technology. So give a round, a huge round of applause as I call upon Mr. John J. Glanzi to give a conventional address. Good morning. I can't hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, that's better. Nice to see you all here. And also welcome to the parents as well. Um, so, first of all, I'd like to thank Anthony for the kind invitation to attend the event here today. Um, and Anthony is the director of the Institute. Um, also, I'd like to m mention Kieran Harshan, Senior Manager, Revenue Optimization, South Asia, Radisson Hotel Group. Nice to meet you, Kieran. We only met this morning in the lobby for the first time. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, students, parents, and faculty staff, on behalf of the World Chefs President, Thomas Gugler, and our board of directors, I am delighted to be present here today to deliver this convocation address to all the students who have successfully completed their studies and of all of you that have graduated from the programs. That's the Diploma in Culinary Arts and the Diploma in Bakery and, and Patisserie Pastry Arts, which are both currently being delivered at the Institute. Just let me give you a brief background about World Chefs. So World Chefs, or the World Association of Chef Societies as we're known, we are a global dynamic network of more than 115 chef associations across the world. We have a membership of more than 5 million chefs, food and beverage managers, waiters, and general, you know, most people in, in, the, in the hospitality industry. So we represent chefs at all levels through the associations and the countries. Um, we were founded in 1928 at the Sorbonne in Paris. And it was founded by a man called Auguste Escoffier. I don't know if, you, if you've heard the name Auguste Escoffier, but when I, was, when I was going through the library in the school, the other day and I noticed, I noticed some books there and Escoffier has written one or two of those books. So Escoffier was the very first honorary president of the World Association of Chef Societies. And the whole idea behind setting up this society was, was to be able to bring chefs from around the globe so that they could network and talk and discuss food and professionalism of our, of our profession. So we're the global authority on food and we create this impact through some four core areas. And the areas, the first one is education. As education director for World Chefs, it's a privilege for me to be heading up a team that has developed the recognition of quality culinary education program, where we now have almost 95 schools recognized across the world. In 2012, when we got involved in this program, we had no association with, with culinary schools. But my background as a chef, and I started many, many years ago, and then, I, then I started teaching later on in life, and I discovered that the teaching in the school is really so important. That's where, that's where it all starts. It's how the delivery of the programs, this is where you get your your whole concept and, and, and discipline for the culinary arts. So education is so important, it really is so important. Um, so we have the, the culinary program. We also then have our um, the certification program, 
But before I talk about that, I just want to mention that ASK, as Anthony has already mentioned, ASK are the fourth school in, in India to have been awarded this um, recognition. Okay? And it's not an easy test, as you'll know. There's, 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 what we've done is, the reason we, we established it was because we wanted to be able to create standards and that those standards would be met and observed by all schools so that the students coming out of those schools and leaving those programs are leaving knowing that they have a quality assured education and training behind them which is really important. Because once you have a good education and a good training, you can then go into the workplace, secure jobs, secure work at either four star or five star hotel level. But then what you're doing is you're, you're not just, you know, you're representing the school in a sense, but you're all, most importantly, you're representing yourself, which is the most important thing. So our next, our next um, pillar is what we call networking. So World Chefs, we provide what we call a gateway to global culinary network opportunities and we host the landmark World Chefs Congress. So we host our Congress every two years. Last month in Malaysia, we held our Congress in Kuala Lumpur. We had 1,600 delegates attend from all over the world. It's, I would suggest it's probably our most successful Congress to date, which is amazing. And that Congress features a variety of, 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 of topics and presentations. So we bring in, we invite chefs from all over the world, world-class chefs, speakers, talking about different issues, obviously related to food and related to the environment and sustainability, as Anthony has mentioned earlier on. So all of these things are very important. And in today's world, we have to talk about them. We can't ignore them. They're there, they're present and they're real. So we have to be able to challenge us. Um, our next one then is competition. So competitions are very important. Um, anything to do with you know, engaging in the public, but certainly from the point of view of competitions, because we find that the competitions actually help to develop people. Because when you go onto a stage and you're, doing, you're competing in a competition, it could, be, it could be a competition for maybe preparing a fish dish. But you're going to go onto the stage you're going to expose yourself, you're going to expose your skill, you're going to expose your technique, your methodology, how you've done it, your hygiene, your presentation, your cooking skills, all of these things all come into play. And by doing that, you're actually developing. You're developing that skill. And you're developing your inner self. You're also developing a confidence within yourself, which is important. I remember my first competition, and it was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. But I learned so much from it. <coughs> because what I was able to do, I was able to go to the judges afterwards and, and please tell me, you know, what do I need to improve? Where did I go wrong? What did I, what should I do next time? And that's important. It's about giving positive feedback. There's no point in giving negative feedback. It's the same in a class, in a teaching class. We don't, we, I would always encourage positive feedback to students. Because then they take it on board, they take it on board in a positive way rather than, rather than being seen as negative. And it's interesting to, to listen to Anthony saying earlier on, and he's absolutely right. It's about you becoming independent thinkers, that the students become independent thinkers. You have to become independent thinkers. Because when you go out into the industry, you have to think for yourself. We're not, you know, the faculty aren't going to be behind you saying, oh no, do this, do that. You have to make that decision. You have to be mature enough to do that. As part of the, 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 the judging, uh, the competitions, we also uh, we induct all of our judges, every one of our judges, no matter where they are, whether they're in India, whether they're in America, or anywhere across the world, every one of our judges are trained to be a judge. So they cannot, they cannot compete or they cannot judge in a World Chefs competition unless they are an accredited judge, World Chefs judge. Um, humanitarian and sustainability. So we have a Feed the Planet and World Chefs Without Borders program. And 
I've been watching the television over the last few days and very sadly watching what's happening in Corella. And it's, it's really sad, all these disasters that are happening across the world. But you know, chefs, we are a very giving, we're very giving people. And I don't know, is it the fact that we cook good food every day or what? You know, I think I've always said to myself that I've been very fortunate to have a job, to be able to work as a chef. And I remember my mother saying to me when I said to her, I want to be a chef, and she was so happy. And she said, the reason I'm happy is because two things. You're going to be in out of the cold in the winter, and you're going to be fed every day. You're going to have food in the kitchen. Yeah? That was a very simple way of looking at it, you know? But, um, you know, it's, it's important too that we, we, we give back things. It's, it's very important that we give back. And, you know, within World Chefs, we have a lot of projects going on. Um, you know, where we're, we're working with street kids and we're, 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 training, we're training people in different programs. In Sri Lanka, we have a program which I'm delighted to be part of through uh, uh, one of our sponsors. And that program has actually, has, has actually reaped successes for the students that have gone through the program. Some of them have gone on to secure really good jobs in hotels because it's about securing the future. That's what it's about. On the, on the subject of sustainability, we have to talk about sustainability. I was addressing the students the other day in the school. I don't know if some of you were there or not. Um, but, and I asked them the question about sustainability. I asked them the question, where do you think the food that we're going to be cooking within 50 years time is going to come from? Where will it come from? What type of food will we be, will we be using? You know? So we need to think, we, we, the, the conversation needs to be taking place now with regards to how we manage that situation when it happens. Because you know, our, our, our planet is growing all the time. And there, there, it will come a point where there won't be enough food to feed the planet. So we have to find ways of how we do that. And I think working in a sustainable fashion in kitchens you know, watching the amount of food that, that chefs prepare in kitchens, even in classrooms. And I think that's where it starts. We were talking about this the other day. We were just saying, you know, that it's important that whatever food comes into class, it's all very well saying, oh, it's in a school, and that it's, you know, it's okay to waste it. It's not okay to waste it. We don't want waste. We want zero waste. That's the thing. We want zero waste. And one of the, one of the, 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 the challenges that we presented at the Congress in Malaysia was, to have a zero waste. So we wanted people, we wanted delegates to talk about how they would approach, you know, developing a zero waste policy in their in their establishments or in their in their in their kitchens. And it starts with a conversation. It starts with somebody sitting down and saying, oh, okay, let's look at what we're producing. Are we producing too much? Do we need to use smaller plates? Why are we using big plates? The, more, the bigger the plate, the more food the people pile on the plate. Small plates, psychology. You know, there are some, there's, some, a lot of, there's a lot of good studies actually being done at the moment in the whole area of sustainability. And it's, it's an area that I've had two of my students have, have actually written thesis on food sustainability. That's how the conversation is going. And we, we need to keep that conversation going. And, you know, in an institute like ASK, I'm confident that that, that, will, that will continue. Okay, so the principal reason for me being here, apart from the pleasure of visiting Bangalore for the first time, I've never been to Bangalore, it's my first time, and it's a beautiful city. So we're delighted to be awarding a certification to you today and want to acknowledge that you, the group here today, are the first group in Bangalore to be awarded the World Chefs Certified County Chef. So what's happening is, you're effectively getting joint certification from ASK Institute and World Chefs. That's a first. That's a first. Okay? And you are the first people. So I think it's important that it's great that we record this, and in time, I'd like to see, and I know Anthony, when we talked about this, is you know to create an alumni for the school, 
and that alumni then becomes the network. And that, that message spreads across, which is important. And it's great to see so many of you here today. So the principal benefits of this international certification is to offer you the opportunity to use your culinary education and training to secure meaningful and long-term employment and to encourage mobility of chefs and cooks in our global industry. Because we know today that chefs are moving, they move around, you know, it's, it's, we're mobile, that's what we do. Every time I meet a chef, they, they say to me, oh chef, where are you from? I say I'm from Ireland. I love to work in Ireland. Okay, fine. But you know, you have to think about, it's not just a simple thing to say, I want to move from my hometown and move to Ireland. We have a saying in Ireland and it is, the grass is always greener on the other side. But not necessarily so. It's not necessarily so. You have to pick it, you have to be sure that you're, you're doing the right thing. Do it for the right reasons, that's the important thing. But you're right, it is important because Today, more and more today, chefs are in demand. We look at TV, all the TV stations, we have all these personality chefs. I don't particularly uh, buy into this TV personality chefs. I love TV and I love watching chefs cooking on TV. And I sit there and my wife gives out to me because she said to me, stop looking at TV because all I'm doing is criticizing the chefs because I see them making simple mistakes. But that's just me. That's because I, I see things differently and that's fine. But, just getting back to this, it's, about, it's also about creating meaningful standards. So when we develop the certification program, we have it at nine levels. We have from the comedy chef, right up to master chef, and then we have culinary educator. So students in this room here today, who are being awarded with the comedy chef level, can in time, if they choose, because you've gone into our system, you've gone into our database on World Chefs, we now have you in our database you will now be eligible in two or three years' time to apply for chef de party or a higher level, if you so choose. But you're in there. Remember that you're, 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 you will be, as of today, you're certified by World Chef. So, finally I'd just like to say that on behalf of our President, Board of Directors, and Education Committee and the Global Membership, we want to welcome you all to the World Chef family and hope that this certification that you're receiving here today will support you in your future careers and we look forward to welcoming you as both National Chef Associ Association members and as individual chefs to some of our many events that take place around the world. I think at this point, you know, when, when, you, when you come to college, when you choose to, 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 to undertake a programme, you have the support of your parents, your partners, your friends. That's very, very important. So I think it would be important that we, you know, finally, and on behalf of your, your family, you should give your family and yourselves a, a round of applause. <laughs> also, we have to mention the faculty because Without the faculty, if you didn't have the teachers, you wouldn't have the knowledge you have today. So it's vice versa, it's the students. I keep saying to my, 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 my team at the school, we would be nowhere without the students. But also, what's really important is to be able to treasure and to recognize our faculty staff. So I'd ask you please to give our faculty staff and the director a round of applause. So, I just have a couple of little, little comments that I'd like you to think about. So when you leave here today and you've, you've gone away and you're happy and you're pleased with, with the whole day, continue to be inquisitive and eager to learn new knowledge and skills throughout your life. Remember that the chef's jacket you wear, this chef's jacket, is the sign of your profession. The hat, the necktie, the attitude, the commitment, the dedication, the professionalism, all of these attributes, they all go hand in hand. A great chef doesn't have to be a great cook. Not just a great cook. They also can be a leader. 
They can be somebody who can inspire. I have a mentor going back nearly almost 40 years. And he came to visit me in my school. He's 92. He came to visit me in my school because he, he heard I was retiring from the school. And he came to visit me. And he's still my mentor today, all those years later. I still look up to him because he was the first person that guided me and said, you know, if this is the path you want to take, here's how you do it. It's very important to, to, to remember these people. It's very important to acknowledge that contribution of these people. Because we don't get where we are today on our own. It's the support of family, it's the support of friends, the support of partners, mentors, other shit. So it's really important. Always be open to new ideas. We live in a modern world. Our world is changing, constantly changing. So we have to be open to new ideas, especially in the culinary arts. Be passionate about your craft. It's really important. Because if you don't have passion, you don't have the love of what you do. You have to have it. Always be willing to share and pass on your knowledge to others. It's not, it's not just yours. You have it. But don't keep it to yourself. That's why the great chefs write books. That's why the great chefs write notes and they keep the notes. But sometimes they keep the notes for themselves. When I was training, and I have to admit, I used to rob the recipes of some of the chefs because they wouldn't give them to me. So I robbed them. I borrowed them. I didn't rob them. I borrowed them. But then I developed my own recipes. And I share those recipes now with my students. So every time I run a program, all the recipes in my in my in my in the manual are all my recipes. I don't want I don't own the recipes. I don't own them. I develop them, but I develop them for everyone else to use. That's the whole point of it. Finally, never be afraid to follow your dream. And always work to be the best that you can be in your life and in your chosen career and path. That's really important. Because we don't know. You know, we, 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 don't, we can't see in 20 years' time where we're going to be in 20 years' time. But we can work towards that. But you have to have the vision. And you have to have the passion, the dedication to do that. So, I'll leave it at that. Um, and just to say again how, how honoured I am to be here. And it's lovely to see everybody here. And I kind of compliment all of the, the students for the lovely turnout that's, that's here today. And again, a privilege and great recognition to the school, ASK. Thank you.